Blog Talk Radio. Alternative facts. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. At 12.07 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, numerous unidentified objects of a known intent and a known origin were detected at high altitudes over multiple locations of Earth's outer space by the National Radio Astronomy Observatory and these objects are presumed to be some form of controlled aircraft. It is not known if more of these aircraft will arrive or if they will attempt entering Earth's atmosphere. United States citizens are encouraged to monitor local media outlets, as more updates will follow as information becomes available. The following message is transmitted at the request of the United States government. Attacks by the undead have been reported in several states across the country. The dead are rising from their graves and are attacking the human race. At this time, it is expected that more attacks of this nature will occur in several other states in the next few hours. The intent behind the attack is unknown at this time. He has been observed that a bike for exchange of fluids is a method of transmission. This is an extremely dangerous situation if they crave the taste of human flesh. It is not known whether this event will last for hours, days, or even longer. Stay calm, as authorities have been dispatched to deal with these creatures. An all-clear siren will be sounded when this situation is under control. Welcome to Within the Chaos with your host, Rodney Shortridge, and co-host, Robin Dalton. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. You can listen in by going to blogtalkradio.com forward slash within the chaos, or listen in by phone. You can dial 323 870 4197. And you can also call in to ask questions to our guests at the same number, 323-870-4197. From deep within the heart of the Appalachians, I'd like to welcome everyone and thank you all for listening to Within the Chaos. My name is Rodney Shortridge and I'll be your host tonight, along with my fiery redhead co-host, Robin Dalton. Well, Robin is not with me once again, but I do have a stand-in special co-host tonight. Her name is Melinda. What's her last name? Jackson. Jackson. You know, the Jackson Five. 
Uh, so you can say hi. Hello, everyone. I hope this is. I hope y'all can hear us because well, I've been having some trouble with it. But tonight for our Halloween special, our returning guest is uh, Maggie White. Unfortunately, Chris Papa Coyote Ostrowski was unable to make it tonight. We wish him the best, and I would like to say that a big thank you for his service uh, to this great country. And Maggie, uh, she investigates the psychic phenomenon and the cult, like Satanism. She has uh, dedicated her life to this. She has been all over the country and in and other countries investigating. Maggie studies myths, legends, theology, like voodoo, Satanism, Christianity, Hebrew, Luciferian, Lund, and vampirism, and also Maggie's a gypsy. First off, I'd like to give a shout out to my cousins up in Ohio, mm-hmm. Jennifer and Joe Shortridge, 222 Paranormal. If you get a chance, check out their talk show, and you can find them on Facebook under 222 Paranormal. I'd also like to give a big shout out to the Facebook Paranormal groups that allow us to post their shows on their pages and help us get the word out about our fine guests. And don't forget, this weekend, Creative Photography will be hosting a Halloween costume theme shoot. Located at Tractor Supply, Pound and Mill, Virginia. This Saturday, October 28th, starting at 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Sunday, October 29th, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Wonder Woman will be down there, so you can come and meet her and have your photos done with or without her. Uh, everyone is welcome to dress up in your best and scariest Halloween costume. Have your photos done. Couples, individuals, families, children, pets. Which pets need to be on the leash, so that way they don't run around and somebody get hurt or they get hurt. Uh, purchase of the Halloween uh, costume theme photo CD is twenty dollars for CD. This includes fifteen to twenty different images, which equals three or four different poses with couples, individuals, and so forth. As I said earlier, um, so this way you can uh, share them uh, on uh, you know your network sites, uh, media. Uh, get them printed, and you'll also receive a copyright release form for this. If you have any questions, you know, give me a call at 276-970-1456 or Angie Casey at 276-210-0355. And I think that's it. So, Melinda, since you're new to this, uh, I always ask Robin, how's her week been? So I'm going to ask you, how's your week been? Well, it was a rough start. I um, had a car problem. The tire blew out. Almost wrecked my car. But it um, looks like it's ending pretty well. Anything else going on while we wait for Maggie to call in? I'm just excited about Halloween. <laughs> Tell us about the grand party that you had, Halloween party at your house this past weekend. Oh, it was wonderful. Um, Quite a few people showed up, and I think everybody had a good time. Everybody said they enjoyed the food and the decorations, and we had a fire pit burning, and I think everybody had a good time. They actually let me play with the matches and start the fire. (laughs) And it was a fire. (laughs) I had a fire going. I think there's a friend going to burn the mountainside down, but I didn't. <laughs> well, I see Maggie's on. Let me get her in here. <clears throat> hey, Maggie, how oh, are you doing tonight? Pretty good. How are you doing? Oh, great. I am so good that you, glad that you could hear me. Oh, my God. I've had trouble the past couple of shows. <laughs> I was so worried I'd be sitting here you just listening to you breathe like I did the last guy last week. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> She's like, I can hear you. And I'm like, yeah. Well, Maddie, can, you, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what started you on this amazing life journey? Oh, um, well, it sort of, I sort of started as a child because my people are uh, gypsies, Roma gypsies, a- a- actual what you would call now travelers. Um, and they're spiritual people. Um, my family does like, uh, fortune telling, seeing walkthroughs. We was like the first tribes 
to ever do anything like that, or even divination, singing, crying, um, all the way back to the Middle East. Oh, cool. So when I turned about 18 years old, I left the family for different reasons and then started a journey when I was in LA, I was working in movie studios and there was a lot of people that had a curiosity to me, but also questions about the paranormal things that was happening in their house, stuff like that, that they had no explanation for. And there was no para TV back then, like in early nineties, you know, um, they really didn't know like where to go to. A lot of them were celebrities. They didn't know, you know, they didn't want to get out on TV or radio or, you know, that they were possibly crazy. So everybody started coming to me. And even on like um, uh, Samhain, uh, they would also ask me to come to big parties that they would throw in L.A. and do tarot card readings and stuff like that to entertain the guests. So um, I started reading up on the occult right around that time because uh, every house that I went to in L.A., um, everyone has a story of this house was previously owned by Satanists, and and that's why it's haunted. And I'm like, okay, so first off, i got to figure out, you know, what Satanism is, correctly figure out what what claims were. And um, I found out that, you know, the Church of Satan is basically atheists atheistic uh, movement based on Sigmund Freud is thoughts and it was just a rebellion against organized religion. So they don't even believe in Satan himself. So when people say, you know, people (laughs) doing satanic rituals, I'm like, okay. And, (laughs) you know, (laughs) <laughs> so, losing just like a, okay, you're losing a whole big part of this. What about Satan? You know, he's in the name. Right. So I, I just figured out that the people who were saying that, you know, Satan did this, apparently it wasn't Satanists that, that put whatever they thought that was there, there. You know? So... Mm-hmm. It, it, it takes a lot of research, a lot of dedication, a lot of like uh, reading up on theology, cultures. Everything can play into how my house is haunted. Not saying that there isn't haunted houses, but I'm just saying that the majority of them is urban legends and, and just fear based. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to thank you for coming back on the show, especially for this Halloween <laughs> special. No and problem so, at all. I mean, yeah, she love you to death. And apparently you're a big hit <laughs> with, uh, within the chaos because I know all the boys are just liking the shit out of your photos. So <laughs> we're going to dive right into the Halloween show. She's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up, you embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a doozy. I think it's a doozy. Can you explain the veil? I've heard the term used many times behind the yes. veil. What does that mean, and yes. what does it have to do with the spiritual world? Okay. Um, there's many terms. They can call it the edge, the further, the over there, the in-between. All of those are acceptable for what it is. And it's just, it's it's a divider between us and the spirit realm. Um, The only way I can explain it is, you know how people, some people can see better than others. Some people can see with 20-20 vision. Some people, you know, have to put on the glasses (laughs) to read text anymore, like myself. (laughs) Yeah, I'm getting that way, um, too. I'm like, 
I keep hitting the wrong yeah. button. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the people can see, some people can see beyond the veil, just beyond it, you know, and some people, they can't. And it's there for them. It, it's there to stop, you know, those two realms meeting right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sam Hain, Salwin, is basically um, is when the veil is the thinnest. And the reason why is because Salwin lands on what's called the in-between. Uh, so take, take all of, you know, a full year and cut it right down in half. You have spring and summer, and then you have fall and winter. So you have light and darkness, right? And mm-hmm. Salwin is in between. So on that day, in that evening, the veil is the thinnest to gain personal magic, to bless items, to contact ancestors, to do any kind of uh, practitions. It's a little bit easier. It gives you a little bit more (laughs) on that day. You know, so, um, but Halloween is um, a Christian uh, day. And these days are October 31st. And what Halloween is, is Eve of All Saints Day in Catholicism. So they basically put that over Samhain, you know, like they put Easter over Astara, they, they just are, you know, Yule, like, like uh, Christmas over Yule, it, it's just to cover up pagan holidays, mm-hmm. and the church was famous for it, and that's what they did, so it's basically Halloween itself, when we say Halloween, it means Saints Eve. All Saints Eve. And November 1st is All Saints Day. Okay. So how would you describe, you know, Halloween from the very beginning, how it got, before it became Halloween, what was it before that? And how did it, you know, uh, I it, guess... It, it, was a, it was a holiday it was, it was a holiday to celebrate our ancestors and that that has passed it's like um you know the day of the dead is november 1st you know and it's sort of like that because the veil is a sin so our ancestors can come but unfortunately so can other things so (laughs) we have to you know welcome the good ones and keep the bad ones at bay so we use wards and wards would be you know jack-o'-lanterns things like we put them outside because it chases away evil spirits so how do you get the good spirits and 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 keep out the bad spirits i mean is is that the point yeah that's the point um, if you want, I mean, a lot of Christians believe to let sleeping dogs lie, right? So not to, mm. you know, talk to the dead, right? It's it's sort of forbidden in certain mm-hmm. circles. But in my family, it wasn't. Um, it was a respected day, a day to honor the ones that crossed over. So. You put, like in my home, um, because I'm a practitioner, I have sigils everywhere through my house. And it, it's just to protect this house from anything that I would drag back. Okay. Hey, Maggie. Hi. 
that uh, does the radio show, and she talks about all safety this week. Did you get that? I sure did. I'm getting ready to stick to you right now. Okay. Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Right. 
if a, if a bet flies near you or, or, or past you, um, it's supposed to signify that somebody is practicing um, a, a negative uh, spell on you. Um, if a bat flies around your house three times clockwise, um, there will be a death soon. So it's just warnings and omens. The, the bat doesn't do none, none of this. It, it's just to let you know, you know, it's, it's just the old ways. It's just to let you know that somebody is mess, messing with you or to prepare you for something that lies ahead. Okay. You know, unfortunately, like a, a death. Just like the, you, you know, the death beetle sound or, you know, seeing a, a, a white chair in your dream, you know, or something like that. It, it, it's all our ban- banshee or, or a shock. Um, seeing any of those things uh, are, you know, forebearers of death. They just come to comfort and to put you aware, prepare you for what's ahead. So they're not, it's not evil. A lot of people confuse it and think that these things are, are evil, but it does this. They blame the signs and not just things happen. And these things are actually being kind because, you know, death can be devastating. And these things kind of help you because you sort of know you're prepared and you sort of know what's around the corner. You know, you're not sure who or what, but also a doppelganger. If you see, like, uh, an image of a person walk through your living room, that's maybe not even in the same state as you. (laughs) That's called a doppelganger. And it just means to be concerned about that person. You know, so it's just old folklore. But, but uh, a doppelganger also, signs, if it takes your form, it means that you're going to die, right? I'm sorry, what? If a doppelganger takes your form, it looks like you. You know, it looks just like you. That means yes, that if you see your own, if you see your own image, your own doppelganger, you're going to die. Right. Um, okay. If if a family member sees it, right? Like, God forbid, if you saw, like, your kid walk through the house, or a parent or, you know what I mean, a sister or a brother to you, it's preparing you, telling you. Because if we're prepared, um, I believe that these signs are to tell us that we can call that person and tell them, you know, hey, I just seen something. I got a bad omen. You know what I mean? Just be careful. Put your belt on. And we can actually change the, the – the future isn't set in stone. We can we can actually change it. We can, if we get those warnings and we know what they are, we can actually change the outcome. Right. That's what they're there for. Right. That's why we should pay attention to signs and things like that. It's really hard to hear. <laughs> Please repeat it. I said that's why it's really important for us to pay attention to the signs around us. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that I constantly am, am looking at the signs. I'm constantly looking for blood on the moon or a circle around the moon or. Okay. Um, you know? Especially with a, with a cat. I mean, as a practitioner, I have an all black cat. And there's a reason for that. I mean, I got her out of a, a farmhouse when she was just weeks old, you know, tiny little thing. And at a certain age, I performed a ritual um, for familiar, you know, and um, it's up to the animal whether they want to do it or not. You just cast a circle and put the stuff around and do your part, but it's up to the animal. If they want to pick to be that, 
they will step inside the circle and accept the responsibility of familiar. And the familiar technically is not the cat, oddly enough. What the familiar does is um, if if you're trying to see inside somebody's home or see something, the cat can see it better. So what happens is um, it's called a go fetch, and the spirit will actually a spirit will actually enter the cat, show the cat what needs to be seen, and the cat will relay the message back to you. There's other things that cats do, but it's called the occult for a reason. It means hidden. Um, so some of the things could be unsettling to people, but there's no harm ever done to any animal by, you know, a witch or a Wiccan or, you know, any kind of practitioner. We we don't harm animals. Um, you know, cu- custom uh, – family rituals do. I mean, my family believes in what's called a salva, and that's a sacrificing of a goat if there's somebody sick in the house. But that has nothing to do with the craft. It's two entirely different. One is culture, one is practice. The craft has no dogma, it has no religion, there's no you know, it, it, it's called witchcraft for a reason. It's a practice. Um, Wiccans have a religion that was basically wrote out by Gerald Gardner. And they follow even a reed, which is sort of a copy of the Ten Commandments, that do ye no harm. And also they believe that if you harm a person, it can come back to you three times fold. That's not true. Um, if we see or find that a kid is being molested and he gets away with it, we can cast to punish that person. You know? And that you, you can't say that that's evil because we're dealing with evil. It's part of the balance. So, you know, according to the craft, there is there is no karmic justice. And if you look around, really isn't any. There's people suffering every single day, people getting raped every single day, and people get away with it. They get they completely get away with it. You know, so where's where's those people's karma? You know. Mm-hmm. Where's the where's the baby's karma that that is paralyzed, or has severe brain damage, and suffers until they die? Where's their karmic justice? There isn't any. So, as a practitioner, we can take that power back and say, no, this is not right, and we can channel it to someone. We can also channel good. We can heal, you know, and help each other. That's what covens do. Um, But all sister witches are all together. No matter what practice you are in, we're all united. I honestly believe that. There's some that is like youngins that will argue with you and want to be a hot shot, you know, and, and that's fine. They, they they grow out of that, you know, but real dedicated people that's been in the craft for, you know, most of their lives, if not their entire life, um, we're not like that. So if, if, if someone is in consciousness, there's ways of making the person see what they did or giving them the same pain that they have 
and a child or you know, independent animal or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's just a verbal and energy. Oh, okay. All that is is there's energy that flows to everybody, there's energy that flows to the universe, and we call it in different ways. And we celebrate our bodies and we can get out with purpose and knowledge and reverence and understanding. That's it. At its mm-hmm. core, that's what that is. Yeah. You know, so there is no such thing as a black witch or a green witch or a red witch or a white witch because humans are many different things. We, we cry, we laugh, we get pissed off. So you know, it's not entirely dark. I mean, not entirely all good. So it can't be just one thing. So it's just how you just use the fact. You know, a lot of people, they shy away from punishing somebody. That's perfectly understandable. Perfectly fine. I had to make some say, no crap, there's no substance. Then something happened to get you know, a family and being in some place and it's gone. Uh-huh. No. Well, you're breaking up again. And, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're breaking up again. I'm sorry. I'm I'm just trying to remember the question and just both men and answer as things I can. <laughs> Well, uh, let me send you the, uh, the email again, and when you click on it, it says up there to click here for the uh, for the show, and then when you it takes you to the dial uh, dial pad, just click one to get in the show. Okay, I'll, I have it. I'll try that. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. And everybody, we will until she does that. We will. Let's find something else in our Halloween music till we get this straightened out a little bit better.
on the first night of Halloween, three witches gave to me some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the second night of Halloween, three witches gave to me two zombie eyeballs and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the third night of Halloween, three witches gave to me three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the fourth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs from a haunted graveyard. On the fifth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the sixth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me six vampires fighting five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the seventh night of Halloween, three witches gave to me seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the eighth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the ninth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me nine goats a haunting, eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting, five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the tenth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me ten goblins glowing, nine goats a haunting, eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting, five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the eleventh night of Halloween, three witches gave to me eleven bats of flying, ten goblins glowing, nine goats a haunting, eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting, five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the twelfth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me Twelve coffins creaking, eleven bats of flying, ten goblins glowing, nine goats are haunting, eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting, five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. On the thirteenth night of Halloween, three witches gave to me Thirteen cauldrons bubbling, twelve coffins creaking, eleven bats of flying, ten goblins glowing, nine goats are haunting, eight mummies waking, seven werewolves howling, six vampires fighting, five creepy dolls. Four headless horsemen, three giant spiders, two zombie eyeballs, and some bones from a haunted graveyard. Don't tell the witches, but I don't know where to put all this stuff. Don't drop. Turn me back on. Okay, we should be back on. Are you there? Oh. Hello. Once again, we got Maggie White. <laughs> oh, my Lord, you're not breaking. <laughs> Please no, I'm make breaking. it stay like that. <laughs> I'm trying. I don't know what I don't know what's going on. It might be the 
that witching time of the year is just really making things worse. Yeah. I mean, so it's, gonna, it's just. I'm going to ask a question before I put that in here. Why does milk have to be on Halloween? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's interesting. <laughs> you don't get dirty. Ain't so, you? <laughs> um, uh, you guys want, wanted me to address why witches wear pointy hats and yeah. Why don't like, you just uh, we're having a hard time here? Why don't you just go through and if we miss something, then or you miss something, we'll point it out. We'll ask. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you just want me to, to talk about basic, you know, where the imagery of witches came from? Yeah, and the significance of the cauldron, the hat, the broom. Exactly. Uh, um, well, that's a contrary, yeah, co- contrary to popular belief, um, many people say that the cauldron had to have three feet. But if you go back far enough and I mean my family's into you know buying and selling antiques and own an antique mart and stuff some of the old old cauldrons were even had feet they had it was a round at bottom with a handle that you hung on the hearth to cook with and it was made out of cast iron and then and then you would have either like a, like a wood, wood uh, plank thing to put it on, or there was a metal round disc that was separated from the cauldron that they can sit it down on. Um, and some cauldrons had four legs, but where where the three-legged cauldron come from is, um, again, a different practice than witchcraft, Wicca. They believe in the maiden, mother, and crone. That's what they consider the the seasons. Um, mm-hmm. So they think that the three get cauldron represents their religion. Uh, with that, it's a nice religion in America, um, but it has it, it is not a trap. The witch, you can be wicked and be witch. Witch and be wicked. Because witchcraft is a craft. It's a practice. It has it contains no dogma at all. It's it. You are casting. You're not asking a deity. So, let's say for instance a prayer, right? A prayer, you have to go on a bended knee. You have to ask a deity. Um, that deity will ask his father, that's another deity, or determine for you what's best and what's not. So if it happens, it's that deity's will. If it doesn't happen, it's not the deity's will. Mm-hmm. Which is sort of go around that. We say, okay, you know, that's no disrespect, but that's the way that you want it. We want to take a little control. Mm-hmm. And we create spells or hexes or curses or divination or seeing or whatever. So we can figure out and determine what's best for us rather than a deity. Mm-hmm. Also, Wiccans um, worship many deities. Many, many, many. They're polytheistic. You know? Um, witchcraft, witchcraft. We are our own deity. Okay? Um, the stereotypical look around Halloween is, of course, the green-skinned, huge nose, broken teeth, disheveled hair, broken-fingered woman. 
with like osteoporosis and just like a black rag over her body. Well, that has to do with basically the malice maleficorum. It, it was a it's a book that they use to determine if you were a witch or not during the the Pur- Puritans' um, reign. So, if in the village they thought that you might have been a witch, torture to you for you to confess to witchcraft. So sometimes they would beat women so bad that a hematoma would appear on the face and over the body. So their face, if it get a bad bruise, it will turn it green will turn when it's healing. Well, that's, that's, that's your green skin. The broken nose is a punch. Your broken teeth, another punch. Disheveled hair is when it's the ground and they just start pulling your hair out. Broken fingers, they break each one until you confess if you're a witch. And the torture just keeps going. Or they dunk you or they will put you on, you know, a wheel and tie you to the outside of it and then just roll you down a hill. You know, if you survive, then, you know, it was God's will. And if you're dead, oh, well, they saved your soul. So if I could change anything for Halloween, I want that image to be abolished because that is abuse. That is a sure sign of abuse. And we subconsciously have kids like this, you know what I mean? And it has nothing to do with being a witch. to do with beating. What's a pricker? Huh? What's a pricker? A tricker? A tr- trick or treat? Like... No, a pr- 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 like in a uh, pussy pricker. It sounded like you just did something dirty. I'm <laughs> again. I did <laughs> say something dirty. The first letter P P R I C K E R. He's asking I, you I what is the pricker. What's the pricker? It broke up so bad I can't, I can't hear What's it. What's the pricker? Trigger, T-R-I-C-K-E-R? Yes. Oh, um, are, are you talking about like in the in 1920s or in old UK because we came over here, kids would get naughty. And they yeah, were allowed like, to yeah, yeah, perform right. naughty Not things to people to sort of get them to yeah, offer them candy. Yeah. Um, the yeah. 1920s. Uh, uh, or soul cakes, or soul actually. Cake. Um, but that was even before. Um, during All Saints Eve, a lot of the poor people um, would go door to door and beg, and they was either given some coins or they was given what's called a soul cake. And a soul cake has a, a cross on it. It sort of tastes like a stone. It has raisins. It's a little bit sweeter, but it is still like bread-like. They believe that if you if if a child was to eat this under the age of 12 years old. It would get somebody out of purgatory. So they would they would feed these children these cakes, sort of like vinegar, to get people out of purgatory. And then as it progressed, um, it turned into kids being naughty unruly and threatening, you know, to burn down a person's house or throw bricks to the windows or do something like that. So basically what they did was they organized, okay, well, you know, if you kids are good, you you can come around and we'll give you candy. And if we don't give you candy, 
you know, you can harm the house or do whatever. So that's how trick or treating started. Okay. To what it is today. What is the purpose of a mask during, you know, Halloween celebrations? And I'm gonna go ahead and ask a couple more. So in case you start going out or I start going out. And uh, the, the masks that? and stuff like that, like during Halloween. Yeah. Is that what? Oh, it's it was to hide who you are from evil spirits. Mm-hmm. Because the veil is the thinnest, so they would put masks on to trick a spirit. Um, it would either look like a hobgoblin, like some kind of something. Oh, there she is. I hear her now. Okay. 
Um, when and how did the origin of ghosts tie into Halloween? I'm around with it because he was wandering on this earth right forever that's his curse so we light up pumpkins put faces on them light up turnips around our house so if stingy jack sees these he might think that it's the embers of hell and stay away well we do it my family does it and a lot of people do it for a different reason we do it to appease Fae, fae creatures, creatures of earth, air, and water. Um, and there's house fae called, some of them are called bogies, or ants to be fae, and they protect animals that will stop, you know, get hurt, stick, or stick, but it's a wizard holding a, a dish with certain stones and gems and shiny things and, and just offerings and and San Haim, I will um, put a potion out for them. I'll give them ale, you know, and just there for a piece, but if you just get fun, it's interesting to almost mimic the rest. The name of your past of make, making items called a port, where it's in one place, one time, boom. You know, if your keys are on the kitchen table, they end up in the bedroom somewhere. You know, they're tricksters. They're they're, they're and and the more that you ignore them, that they're like a child, the more that they'll do. So we appease them, we give them offerings and stuff like that, and it keeps them quiet. But if you if you do think that you have a spirit inside of your house that might be a, a bogart or a bogey, it's a very easily rectified situation. Um, what you do is you take a handful of uncooked rice. And you throw it on the kitchen floor before you go to bed. Um, House Fay has what's called OCD. And they will try and pick up each individual grain of rice. They also have no patience whatsoever. So they get frustrated with this task at hand and they will leave. And then in spring, what you do is you will um, give an offering to the fae, and, and you, you basically plant strawberries. And that will, are in foxglove and, and other flowers and fruits that we know that in berries that they like. And it brings them back into the house so you have good spirits always in the house. Happy. And they protect the house from negative ones. Okay. So Bogarts, Bogarts really aren't evil. They don't see things like we do. They don't see like cruelty and kindness. They're of nature, so they see it all, you know. So 
it's very death is very confusing to them because they they don't die, you know. So they don't know if they can seriously hurt you. Some people have you know noted that they haven't given offerings or forgot an offering and something come up and push them downstairs. Um, you know, misplaced their insulin. I mean, they they just. They just do it just like a child would. They don't understand the consequences of their actions. And it can just keep on progressing because they're like a child. They won't know them. And it's worse and worse. And it's just, it's being ready. I have people know that. Like a three hour ritual, and, and you know, getting the athame and the cauldron and the incense and the ribbons, and the, oh god, and, and no, no, throw rice on the ground <laughs> on your kitchen floor, and you know, grow some freaking strawberries, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when when did the origins of ghosts, uh, you know, come into Halloween? Well, again, that, that has to do with the the veil being thin, right? So if the veil's thin and our ancestors can, so can other people's ancestors. Uh huh. Okay. So they wander. You know, if the, if they're not acknowledged, we believe that if our ancestors isn't acknowledged, on that respected. That, that they can be sad and bitter. So we acknowledge all spirits. So okay. that's where ghosts came in. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, what does the term gate night mean? Uh, gate night is October 30th. It's also called trick night. Or a uh, cabbage night. Um, it has many names, and it basically, what it is is um, from Scottish and Irish heritage. Um, it's still sometimes just up in Rhode Island and New York and areas like that, where there's predominantly Irish and Scottish people, and it's it's basically turned into a block party which it used to be a celebration for for, um, a fox night. And basically it was a a group of thugs that tried to take out King James. They tried to kill him. And when it fell through, they celebrated. So it happens to be it was celebrated on November 1st. (laughs) There's so many holidays that land on the same day you have like four or five holidays that lands on three days <laughs> it's just crazy <laughs> to yeah. sort out the origins of each and every one of them but basically they all kind of melt in now together you know well, some people believe that um, there's a night for, for the adults uh, to go out and party, and then, you know, there's a night for the kids to go out and trick or treat and get the candy. So they'll separate it into two nights, you know. So that's also another version of that. So it just kept on through the ages. We we are practicing it. We just don't know what we're practicing. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. People don't even know what they're practicing or celebrating. <laughs> exactly. Oh. So what does the skeleton represent for Halloween? Is that still part of the dead and the veil? or It's still that... part of the dead. Yes, it's still part of the dead. Um, it has nothing to do with undead or anything like that. Um, it just has to do with death and respect for the ancestors. And, and during, like, uh, Los Deramontes, the Day of the Dead, in November 1st, um, they actually will decorate little what's called sugar skulls 
you know, to represent their, their dead relatives. And they will decorate graves with these images, and they will celebrate by drinking around, you know, the cemetery and having a party. It's a celebration. It's, it's not sad. It's not looked at as sadness. It's looked at as positive memories and remembering the family. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. So, Maggie, what does um, the tarot cards have to do with the role on Halloween? A lot of people, when they're having parties, um, that there was a magazine years ago called Bogart Magazine, and it came out in the Roaring Twenties, and it was the um, sort of like the go-to guide on how to throw a massive uh, Samhain or Halloween gala when it started to take off here in the United States, right? And oftentimes they would hire gypsies to come in and fortune tell on that night. Um, when I was in L.A., I get asked all the time to go to, quote, unquote, what's called Hollywood parties, which would be actors and stuff like that. It would be held in, you know, one of the actors' homes and stuff, and I would get hired to sit there and basically tarot read. So that's sort of how that kind of weaved in again, because the veil's the thinnest and it's sort of exciting and a new law, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, divination is a two-edged sword. I mean, people do it as a joke and then they start getting scared once you start hitting on real things. Um, so you, you have to really be careful during divination. Um, also, I will hold seance. I had a friend that came to me. Um, her boyfriend was breaking up and she wanted me to do a reading and she came with me with her friend. And she came to the door. I'm doing a tarot card reading for her. And her friend is just attacking you know what I mean? This is mm-hmm. a juicy. She's trying to con you. I'm not asking for a dime, mind you. I'm just sitting there trying to help a friend, right? And she's a con artist, and this is what these people do. And I think that they're Muslim. You know what I mean? Just all kinds of weird shit is coming out of this woman's mouth. So she gets really, really pissed. She gets really frustrated because I'm trying to ignore her and be empathetic to her friend and that's crying, obviously, and, you know, when you're young, you think that your life is over when you break up with a boyfriend, so, you know, she's completely devastated, she thinks that like, I'm never going to find love again, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to read for her and, and do palm reading and tarot cards and explain to her, you know what I mean, no, I see something in your future, and this lady just walked over, which is a complete no-no, and she grabbed my two wrists over the top of of my table that I had set up. And she said, okay, you fucking bitch, what do you see with me? And it just came out of my mouth. I said, your son. And when I said it, she, she hit me so hard in the face. She just closed fist and popped. And the actress Stop it. No, the press was going to come. I was going to call somebody. I'm like, no, I'm cool. I, I, you know, you didn't do it. She did, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's fine. I'm trying. My, my nose is bleeding. I'm trying to, you know, hold paper towel. And I don't care if I call cops. I don't care if it's and they go I just ran to my door and um, my friend looked at me I'm so sorry I didn't and put in the hand of work so I don't know if I was supposed to to help 
up again can you I hate to ask you to call back but can you call back again I apologize bro thank you see if we can get her back on sound a little bit better it's all right we get this we'll we'll get through this everybody I hope you all can hear because I ain't had nobody complain uh yet but to me, it sounds like she's, I don't know, down in a cave. A deep cave. So, y'all want me to play some more music? So she gets back on here. Let's see what we got. Thank 
Thank you. Hello. Mike turned in. There we go. Oh my God, that sounds so much better. <laughs> but like you came out of the cave. I can hear it now. <laughs> I apologize. I don't know what. I have never had this much trouble at one night. I don't know what the hell's going on. It must be your powers. You're overloading the circuits or something. <laughs> Probably because we're talking about spirits. It's something. I, like I said, I have never, and I've been doing this almost three years, had this much trouble. I, I don't, you, you got me like, like, wow. I wonder if she does good back rubs too. <laughs> she got that kind of power. <laughs> With that evil laugh, she's like, Yeah, I can rub a good bag. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> well, let me let me ask this one while, you're, while I can hear you <laughs> before you fade away. <laughs> before the oh, my God. Say, oh, fuck you, Rodney. Uh, what is the purpose of a haunted house and why is there such a huge attraction during Halloween season? Again, it's it's connected. It goes back to the veil. It goes back to being afraid. So they took that fear and they reversed it. They empowered themselves. They created, quote unquote, haunted houses that are completely harmless because it isn't really a haunted house. It's just people scaring the shit out of each other. So it's adrenaline and everything that comes along with it. And it's, again, euphoric. It's stimulating. You get, you know, you're in a dark area, and some teenagers, you know, ha- has their hands in their boyfriend's back pockets, and they're sort of guiding them through, and you know, <laughs> a little bit of, you know, touch and tickle. Touch and tickle. Do you think it? Do you think it might be disrespectful for the spirits, or just the spirits are sitting back going? Yeah, I remember the days when I used to get touched and pickled. I, I, I think so. I, I think that they have. I mean, you got to think about it. You know, spirits are more knowing than we are right now. So, you know, they're sitting back and going, yeah, you go for it, boy. Right. <laughs> you, don't ask you, mm-hmm. you know, you probably have spirits wanting to high five your ass by the time you get out of that haunted house. <laughs> you smack your ass as you walk out, and you're like, woo, damn, who's that? Yeah. You know, some of those young boys walk out of that on a house is, you know, smoking a cigarette <laughs> and looking for a bed to lay down in. <laughs> Fear and sex go hand in hand. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I, I can testify, but I'm not. I'm the. I'm. I'm the host. Yeah, I ain't the guest. Uh, where, where do you, Where do you think the future of Halloween is heading? I don't I, I I I see it changing a little bit each generation. I mean I'm forty six years old. So I mean in the seventies it was completely different than it is right now. We didn't have haunted houses. You know what I mean? Um we dressed up for Halloween the kids. You know, a little Halloween party with cakes and candies and you know what I mean? A little Halloween Thank bash. You. So it's progressed since then and I think it's still gonna pro- progress. It depends on if you're looking at the spirituality side of it, or if you're you're just looking to, you know, get off with your girlfriend, it just depends. Oh. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> <laughs> at least your your wings at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, an athame in, in a cauldron can be considered or stood in for. Um, a penis and a womb. <laughs> you know? So, yeah. it, it just yeah, everything's just a little titillating. Everything can be a little naughty if you want it to be. You know, because because there's, a, there's also a, a practice that a coven will do called the Great Rite. Well, it's changed tremendously from when people first started doing it till now. Now they do it with the Athame and Cauldron. Before it was the Lord and Priestess that would sort of get it on. 
it would bring luck to the coven. And it was done in, in a ritualistic way. So people would watch them? Your your coven would if they wanted to. If not, they would turn their backs, but they still would be a part of the practice. Orgy? Now that's not saying that it was an orgy. That's not saying it was an orgy. Your if usually the the lord and the priestess are are a couple, you know. So it's it's not it's not like you're meeting a stranger and you know what I mean. Uh, you're you're doing this. No, it's 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 a ritual that's done. The man is in a long black robe, so is the the priestess, you know, and it's just it's a ritual that that is done. You really can't see a lot depending on how comfortable the priestess is. Some priestess, you know, the robe is missing. Some priestess, the, the robe is on. It just, you know, but. It is a practice. Now Wicca has changed it into the uh, chalice anathema, you know, the cauldron anathema. So they don't practice it even the same way. And to be honest about it, I don't think that it would have the same oomph. Yeah, you got to have that oomph. (laughs) I mean, Think about it. What's more powerful? Well, you better be oofing it. (laughs) Think about it. What's more powerful, okay? Making love, right? Uh Or taking two inanimate objects and plunging them together. Yeah. Where do you get more spiritualism more out of? Oh, I get it. Which one? Dang, man, I'd be like, hell yeah, love this cult, should have joined up years ago. <laughs> when, do I, when do I become a creep? <laughs> it, 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 re- it really isn't seen as something dirty. Anton LeMay used, dirty. used to have um, orgies down in the basement of the Church of Satan. And it really wasn't seen as something dirty. I don't. And he took it to the. He took it to really far, you know. But um, if the lady in any way said no, he had a athame ready to plunge into somebody. So he would protect the girl that would be giving herself for this ritual. Even though the Church of Satan does not believe in Satan, they still perform rituals, and that happened to be one of them. But oh. it's sort of like a shh, yeah, <laughs> kind of Don't thing around sure. around Satanists. They, they they they're trying to the Church of Satan is trying to I think separate itself from um, the rituals. And, and, and trying to come into a different era. It's sort of like the way that Christianity is sort of separating itself completely from Judaism. Mm-hmm. It seems like in Christianity, they, they took the Bible and they just cut it right in half. The Old Testament, you know, you can throw away, and it's just the New Testament. You know, so every religion, I think, it, it, it sort of has a progression to it to a certain degree. And I think that that is what the Church of Satan is, is trying to get away from mm-hmm. is is the taboo things that in the sixties was fun, <laughs> but now is looked down upon. Yeah, I think that's what's wrong with America. We just ain't fucking enough. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of things wrong with America. Well, Don't get me on that rant. <laughs> we'll be here all fucking night long. Oh, I know. But I do think it's a <laughs> people just getting the booty. Everybody's complaining about the booty. It's like, oh, he touched me. Which, you know, if a man touched a woman inappropriate, I agree. Yeah, smack his ass. But, right. you know, and I'm not trying to justify it, but, you know, no. both creatures, man and woman, are sexual. And, you know, if Absolutely. a man woman slapped his ass or came on to him, if he said anything about it, 
He'd be a laughing stock. Right. I mean, I, I think because my culture's different. We have um, arranged marriages, so we don't date. We don't have the same uh, culture. From an outsider looking in, I, th- I think that there has been a huge emphasis lately on sex. I mean, every time you turn on the freaking TV, there's a, you know, there's an erectile dysfunction ad, you know, or an ad about some something, you know, about so- somebody's hoo ha, you know, and some woman ranting about it and complaining. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh my God, Melinda said something funny. She whispered it. <laughs> I would repeat it, but I'm afraid she might smack me in the back of the head. <laughs> but it's funny because I really want to comment on that. Go for it. I don't care. <laughs> she, We're adults. She's sitting there like, mm-hmm. you better watch what you say, big girl. You tread and tread. <laughs> I think she's got a question. She's sitting here, she's just that scratching that face and sitting there and waiting like, big guy, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Go ahead. Her face is all red now. She's a fan girl, but she can't, she awful red right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so my question is, um, how would you like to see Halloween celebrated today? If, if you could be in charge of it and 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 change things or tweak things or whatever, I mean, what what would you like to see? When I throw a party for for the festival, I will always talk about the origins, the spirituality of it, love one another, love each other's you know religion respect each other, you know, respect each other's beliefs, respect each other's ancestors. I want to see more of that. I want to see the spiritual side of things. Um, I don't want to see little girls with broken noses and busted teeth and shaggy hair walking around because, you know, everyone was at one point was terrified of a witch, so they beat the shit out of them, you know? So that that, that is violence. You're looking at you know, abuse. I want I want that image to just <clears throat> be gone, to die. If I could change anything about this holiday, it's that image, because okay. and it's in its direct correlation of the malice malice quorum. I mean, they would beat the crap out of us if they thought that we were a witch. They beat us so much that if we would actually confess to make the beat and stop, and then we were killed. So, so you could not win or lose. You were going to die anyways, no matter what you said you were going to die. Right. You know, and yeah. women can be cruel to each other. I mean, you know that. And it, it, so most women are that passive-aggressive type cruelty where they don't come, like, if I have a problem with somebody, I come to you and I say, okay, girl, you know, this is my problem. <laughs> you know, I think you're being a bitch. <laughs> and right. then I explain why I think that. I think that, that, that women, um, a, a lot of women tend not to be that way. So they're indirect about it. So if they wanted to get back at somebody in that time, what kind of better thing to do than, you know, to go down and say, you know, she's a witch. And then, you know, watch that bitch get beat up and die. Okay. And we were trying to ask you earlier about a pricker, you know, with the witch's mark. Can you elaborate on that? A witch's mark? With, you know, with the pricker, the tool that they would use? The, the torturing tool? Yes, they they call it a pricker. They would prick right. the, the woman. You're you're breaking up. <laughs> Here. 
the pricker but, is a tool that they would use to see whether or not there was a witch's mark. Right. Also, also they used to strip down babies and look, look at babies all over, including including their their, their vaginas and everything to look for a witch's mark. Right. And if you think well, about it, if you if you think about it, everybody has some kind of mark on their body that could be perceived if they really want it to as a witch's mark. Right. But then they also so, cut the flesh to see whether or not they would bleed or not. Absolutely. I mean, it's torture. That's what I'm talking about. That That's the reason why, you know, you see the old witch with the hump back, you know, they, they used to crap out of us and use that pricker and slice us and cut us and beat the crap out of us and bust our nose and break our teeth and break our fingers. And it, it, it it's complete abuse. And it was mostly, if you think about it, to women. I think in Salem, there's only one male that died accused of witchcraft. And the actual witch that was a practitioner, Tituba, she never got hung. She left. So the the real practitioner was let go. And then everyone else was accused of being a witch and went through you know, the rules of the Malice Malice for Quorum. Right. Which also has, you know, to, to do the, the, the pricking and to look for a witch's mark. But now, also, also they figured also, that the witch's also, mark um, could be hidden. So whether you had one or not, you were still screwed, you know, right. because they figured right. that you could throw a glamour over it. And if they can't see it, it's because you're just a damn good witch. Hello? Oh, well, we're here. Um, okay. <laughs> she's, she's looking for a question. Everyone got freaking quiet. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, we're talking about a pricker, and of course, everybody gets quiet when we talk about a pricker. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> what would you like to <laughs> come away with knowing about Halloween that maybe we haven't mentioned? Just that it's not it has nothing to do with the devil. It has nothing to do with Satan. It has nothing to do with demons. Nothing. Nothing to do with those things. You know? Um, witches don't, don't believe in those things. You know, a lot of pagans don't believe in those things. So it has nothing to do, to do with those things. So I would like it to be separated. I would like the truth to be out there and not fear. I mean, to be honest, that's why Jehovah's Witnesses and Christian scientists and I think some Lutherans, they won't let the kids go trick-or-treating. And I think that that's bad. What kid doesn't want to freaking dress up and get free candy? I'm 46 years old. I don't want to do it. <laughs> You're breaking up really, really bad. I can't hear. You're breaking up so bad. Not a word. Not a word. Not a word. I can't freaking hear you. Are you just laughing because you can't hear me? I just hear like. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, call me back. I'm sorry. We're going to take another intermission. Now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. What the, okay. what the hell? I don't know. That's what's been going in on our end, too. Going in on our end. That didn't sound right at all, did it? Especially after talking about prickers. <laughs> talking about prickers and vaginas. Oh, my Jesus, God. Man. <laughs> Got me all tore up. This Halloween show turned into a damn sex piece. <laughs> Hey, that was your fault. We were doing fine. 
Hey, when you brought up, when y'all brought up penis and vaginas, I'm lost. I, I get a baby. I was like, huh? Why do all men turn into babies when we start talking about that? Have you noticed that? Because <laughs> we don't get into the babies. <laughs> Especially some that, you know, their vajayjays are fine, and, you know, and others are. Oh, my Lord. Not as fine, I guess. You're taking it to a whole other level now. It's still with within, water. It's still within, <laughs> the fuck down. it's still within the Halloween spirit. Because think about it, all these women dressing up all sexy, fine, damn Well, yeah. Yeah, the, their costumes, it, it, it's an excuse to wear slutty costumes anymore, and I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. I think I think that a woman doesn't need to dress like that. She's sad. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody likes to dress up. And, I, you know, what? even when I was younger, I would wear the spike high heels and the mini skirts and the little devil horns. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. when you get older, you you look at it through a different perspective, and you're like, you don't need all that shit. You know, you're going to be uncomfortable. Your feet are sore at the end of the night. You know? I don't know. I don't wear high heels. I wouldn't know. I can barely walk in shoes. You know, I'm and good. I'm big into corsets. So, you know, I put corsets on and it's hard to breathe. I mean, it's just. When I get dressed up for anything, I, I mean, I, I'm just like barely breathing. Is, is, it, is it because it's wrapped around your lungs or you just got so much pushed up in your face? It, it's it's because it's tied in so tight, of course. It, there's actual wires are, are what's called well bones tied into a proper corset for weight uh-huh. training. And when it's pulled tight, um, it actually can move your organs up. Oh shit! You know, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's it's messing up with your body. It really uh, is. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stuff you women wear that's just fantastic. But to put your body through that kind of abuse just to, you know, look like that. I mean, I just a lot of men don't. I mean. We try to contract it, but we don't want to see a woman go through all the pain and suffering just to look good for a few hours. <laughs> right. I mean, you're a male. Be honest. What would you rather look at? A girl that's dressed like that or a frumpy girl? <laughs> a what kind of girl? Frumpy. Chunky, kind of just, you know, uh, you know like the, D- disheveled. But, frumpy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it depends. I mean, uh, you know what I mean? I mean, are, are, are you going to – you're bullshitting because you would actually look at a girl with sweatpants the same way as you're going to look at a girl with, you know, a corset and, and high heels and, and a mini skirt. Yes, you don't know me. I, 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 I do not – I am not a, a type of person. I'm not one of those men that's like, no, 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 that's too sloppy for me. No, no, no. I don't want these men to be like, mm, that girl looks like she knows how to clean house things. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I look at. She's, she's all bummed out. I'm like, mm hmm. She's been working too hard to dress up. So, yeah. Let's see. There's some benefits to this. Let's see. This, I know also, um, they used to give women the Belladonna back in the day to dilate their eyes because it was, it was seen as. A beautiful thing. You guys well, are breaking up again. Well, we're down to three minutes. Can you hear me? Can, Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? Can you hear me a now? little bit. Yeah, I can hear you. You're okay. just breaking in and out. But I, okay. I, th- I think that our, our time you're saying is running down. Yeah, we got about two minutes, so I figured that, you know, we'd go ahead and want to... Do you have any more questions? No, no, that... This is the speed... This is the speed... Huh? Okay. 
and Okay. Well, Maggie, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and fighting through with me on this, and I apologize for for everything. I don't think it's like that was their solution. I feel really bad. Okay, we didn't understand. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah, have a good night. And, uh, no, no, God bless you guys. Well, yeah, you're breaking up bad girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't hear you. began to rise and suddenly to my surprise he did the monster mash it was a graveyard smash it caught on in a flash he did the monster mash from my laboratory in the car police to the master bedroom where the vampires teased the ghouls all came from their humble Get a joke from my electro. They did the monster match. It was a graveyard smash. It caught on in a flash. They did the monster match. The zombies were having fun. The party had just begun. The guests included Wolfman, Dracula, and Digging the sound He got on chains Back by his baying hound The coffin bangers Were about to arrive With the vocal group The crypt kick of five They played the monster match It was a graveyard smash We had caught on in a flash They played the monster match out from its coffin, Drax's voice did ring. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the match. It's now the monster match. And it's a graveyard smash. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the monster mash. Now everything's cool, Jack's a part of the band. And my monster mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them what it meant you. Then you can monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. You'll catch on in a flash. Then you can monster man. Easy boy, you impetuous young boy. Mm. 